So here we are at the top of the hour. Um, let me just welcome everyone on. A uh, couple of attendees who I have on so far. Uh, bidding you greetings, bidding you welcome. Special welcome as well to my panelists, Jackie Ma and Father Nature. And as I have been sharing in the emails, um, this is a really, really special session. And it's going to be one that's a little bit different from some of the others that we have, in fact, from all of the others that we have done. In all of the others that we have done, I, I've always run with the premise of what is the essence of being Lucian? Can we tap into it? Can we identify it? And can we, in identifying it, use it to help us be the very best that we can be? So far, um, we have had quite a broad cross-section of interaction, um, starting out with history uh, in the very first episode, coming across, um, looking at economics, um, looking beyond that at culture in the last one. And today's um, episode is one that is very dear at heart to me. It is one that has been brimming in the pot for some time. I mean, from as far back as Carnival, when some of the guys said to me, um, you know, I wanted to do Denry segment. And it was like Carnival, no, we're busy making music and what's not and beats. And I said, sure enough, let's just defer. Um, in speaking to the essence of us being Lucian and the specialness of us being Lucian, every segment always rang out for me because it is so quintessentially Lucian and it has had um, such an interesting journey in terms of the way it has been embraced but also the way that it has been criticized and ostracized to a certain extent by some in the society. And as I went out trying to find, you know, where did this music originate? What's its story? I want to have an interaction with the person who created it. A number of names were thrown out to me. But every time I turned around, I, I was being told, you need to contact Dub Master G. Then someone else said to me, you need to talk to Japima. Um, no, not Japima, you need to talk to Jaim. And now I had no idea who any of these persons were. And purely by happenstance, I ended up calling a number that said Dub Master G, and then discovering that this is Jaim and that he is the creator and the originator of the music that we have come to know as Denry Segment. And I'm saying come to know because there's an interesting story that Jaim will share with us this afternoon as he really takes us through his journey. So what I wanted to do with this session as compared to some of the others that we have, that we have done is just invite these gentlemen who are of the younger generation what I like to call um, tomorrow's leaders actually making their strides today is to invite him in to share his story. I'm going to let him run with it. And I will jump in maybe with some questions along the way. And I invite folks to post thoughts, questions, comments as usual. So that's going to be Jaim. And then Father Nature. Father Nature is just so interesting. Um, I have a Jamaican friend. She invited me to get National Geographic certification when she saw the work that I was doing at Fonja A um, Couple of years later, she sent me this video and said, Kirk, I'm seeing this guy in St. Lucia and his stuff is really, really cool. It reminds me of a guy who I met in Jamaica, a young guy was doing, he was doing some spearfishing stuff and she encouraged him. She worked with him, she supported him. Just in terms of, of you know, that sort of moral support. Yeah, you can do it. What you're doing is great. And so she introduced me to, to Father Nature, to his videos. And then I'm at the last SLHTA AGM that happened a couple of months ago. And there was Father Nature invited in, um, brought on stage to tell his story. And the, the SLHTA 
had taken him in as a young leader that the organization is going to support, encourage, and nurture. And I just thought, oh my God, this is the same person. So I shot <laughs> some video, sent it off to my friend in New York. And then before the, the, the session is over, she is now communicating with Father Nature and saying, hey, I felt like if I was right there with you. And again, a truly amazing story that he has to share. And it was for this reason that I invited in these two gentlemen. And like I said, I'm going to invite them to share their stories more so than asking what they think solutions are. Because I think just from the stories they share, we will be able to see solutions, thoughts, ideas, and also to see that all is not lost for us here in St. Lucia, despite all of the challenges that we share. With that said, I want to start the session out by inviting Jaim or Japima to speak to us. But before I do, I want to start out by doing a share screen and just sharing one of his beats with you. And also, I thought that the words in it were rather interesting. And like I said, I just want to invite you to partake in that, and then we can take things on from there. So here we go. Oops. Uh, let me just do this. Go back in here, do the share screen, and make sure, okay, I've got share sound going. And here we go. Um, just, just hit me a little note in chat, letting me know if you're hearing the sound coming through. Fake friends are no different than shadow. They stick around you during your brightest moments, but disappear during your darkest hours. They don't come into your life just to love you. They come into your life just to use you. Misuse, reuse, and abuse you To tarnish your name, they will accuse you They don't bring to your life, they come to take from you Opportunity is all that they see in you False love, to take what they want from you And also the benefits that come Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off The hypocrites and parasites, I'm telling you my friends Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off All those fake friends and those wannabes, please cut them off Cut them off, cut them off. Don't stop behind your back, thinking that it's alright. Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. They hand you the scissors, do what is right, my friend. Them all. They never try to pull you up just to keep you down. That's why they never show up when you're feeling down. You're a blessing. That's why God made you strong. You believe you need them and that's where you wrong. You never want to see them suffer so you offer help. In your struggling times, they never offer help. The pain and the misery is clear in your eyes. I wrote this beautiful track just to open up your eyes. Cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them off. The hypocrites and parasites, I'm telling you my friends, cut them them all, cut them all, cut them all, cut them all. All those fake friends and those wannabes, please cut them all, cut them all, cut them all, cut them all. Don't stop behind your back, thinking that it's alright. Cut them all, cut them all, cut them all. Cut them all. you the scissors, do what is right, my friends. Cut them all. The sneaky and the dogmatic, cut them all. Those bossy and boastful, cut them all. Impolite and hostile, cut them all. Self-centered and arrogant, cut them all. The bitchy and the cynical, cut them all. Big-headed, overcritical, cut them all. Aloof and thoughtless, cut them all. Defensive and confrontational, cut them all. Stop being there for those who disappear on you. They add pressure just to make it work for you. Those you do the most for will do the least for you too many people in your boat will never roll with you stop being there for those who disappear on you they add pressure just to make it worse for you those you do the most for will do the least for you too many people in your boat will never roll with you so be mindful of the narrow-minded the intolerant the stubborn the obstinate the indiscreet ones the unpredictable the vague the impatient ones, 
unreliable, the jealous ones, the possessive ones, the resentful, secretive, careless, irresponsible, the nasty, and of course, the untidy ones. There you have it, folks. I couldn't think of a more appropriate introduction for my friend, my brother, Japima. It's all yours, my brother. Share, share some of the love with, 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 with folks out there. Your time. All right. Us. No problem, man. Once again, just good afternoon to each and everyone locked and tuned in, you know, to, um, you know, Cook Elliot's vibe, you know. This is a man we, 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 we ought to just respect on every level i mean this is an elder and he understands what it is to be solution and also you know to to express who we are through his platform in whatever way possible you know so greetings to one and all brother cook big up yourself you know yes, yes people so i mean there's a lot to share, you know, with who we are as St. Lucians. You know, we're bilingual. We speak both the Creole and the English. We know the Creole is the mother language. And basically, Creole is a mixture of English and French. Because Helen, very beautiful. And you had all those metropolitan countries fighting to take charge of Helen. <laughs> So, I mean, history tells us that, you know, seven times British, seven times French, you know. So as a result, it made us who we are right now. So the Puyol is basically a mixture of English and French, broken English, broken French, whatever way you call it. And um, I take great pleasure as a solution, speaking it and also expressing myself in it, whether it's just having a, a normal conversation or musically, you know? And if we look at our history in terms of, you know, background and culture, we know we all have the African kind of vibe, you know? And it's more like, you know, the African drums and, you know, the knocking of the bamboo and, you know, just different musical instruments where we put natural musical instruments where we put together and we create that sound, you know, to move. Yeah. So, I mean, with that said, I can say, as a young man growing up, well, they named me Japima. I was my uncle because my mom said when, when, when I was born, you know, I was a bit noisy in, in that I, I would cry for every single thing, you know? And the only place I would sleep was on the table. <laughs> now, Pima is basically pepper. It's called, it's pepper in English, you know, but that's the quail name, you know, Pima. So my uncle would refer to me as being very hot because I'm always, you know, sweating and I'm all, always crying, you know, so say, this boy is a hot boy, you know? And it just, my uncle just called me Japima which is a name I never really paid any attention to until last year, 2021, when a few, you know, gentlemen from my area who traveled abroad and they came back home and they saw me, you know, cause I was so tiny and they saw me like, they said, well, boy, this man is a real man now, you know? And all of them was like, Jappy Mug, I saw, you know, you were small and, you know, we used to call you that name and you're a big man now and you know you, you're still the same you, you have that energy and that vibe and it just hit me one time you know i mean i went by the name of the master j through my music yeah other names people just just, just call me different names but the japanese was the original nickname from from the inception so i just decided from last year man i'm just rebranding i'm just going back to the original japanese now with this said the Denry segment, what they refer to as, well, Denry segment, uh, this is not the original name. Yeah, I would just have to say it that way. I don't want to be selfish about anything. I just thought that in St. Lucia that we, we enjoy, you know, different cultures. Especially we enjoy lots of music. 
And over the years, um, I, I, it, it just occurred to me that we should have something that's signature to us. We should have our own vibe. And folks, please excuse the noise in my background. Cook, my humble apologies, but like I said, today is my daughter's birthday. And at home, I'm just holding a, a party for her. And I'm actually taking time off the party. So my family is there. So they're just on the outside, but you know, I mean, a little something done passing already, you know, so people don't drink a little something. So you, there's just that little noise in the background, but my humble apologies for that, because we were supposed to have this meeting two weeks ago, but because of the storm, yeah, we could not. So again, the background noise, my humble apologies. Yeah. So just, just to continue. Uh, no problem, but you owe us a drink. No problem. Just roll. <laughs> yes, I get this drink. You have to be here right now. If you're not here, then <laughs> everything will be done. <laughs> I forward that. I forward that message. Yeah. <laughs> but nice. Continuing on with your story of sharing the whole idea of how how the, the, the yeah. music came about. So in my community, and we're we're in the which month of where? November. Which is, which is where? Where are you from? Grand Ravin, that's that's part of the Mabuya Valley. Okay, nice. Yeah. Hold on, huh? Um, oh. Yeah, you're hearing everything. Yeah, yeah I just have to just. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so um, I'm from Grand Ravine. That's Mabuya Valley, Denry North, to be precise. All right. And this is where the whole, again, I would have to see what they refer to as Denry segment. This is where the whole vibe started, you know? And, um, I have to big up the elders in the community. You know, my granddad and his friends, they were in what you call a solo group. Now, solo is basically, you know, it's just it's music with the drums and you know the 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 the, the shakers and the knocking of the bamboos, you know, every year around that time, November into December, this is when. You know, the elders would come on the streets and it's basically storytelling. So whatever happens in the community that most of us wouldn't see on a daily basis, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of, I would, I would say, um, nightmares. <laughs> we, refer to them, we refer to them as, as, as you know, the, the magicians, you know, at nights, they, they do stuff at nights. You don't see them during the day, but at nights, you know, they do stuff. Magic so there's always someone who would see, and in, in, the, the quail name for that is magic. Okay, right. <laughs> <Magic Man>. <laughs> <laughs> so you find certain people would indulge in certain activities, you know, where they try their best to keep it secluded or in secret, but just that one person would see. And you know, the moment one person sees that stuff, automatically the lyrics would, would they would just formulate the lyrics in Quayol together with the drums, and you just mix it up nicely. And here's the story. So most times that story is like reality together with the drums. And you know, it has that catchy feel, that catchy feel in it where the most interesting part of the story would be on repetition, right? So that repetition in Quayol, I mean, and, and you know, it's just very exciting and interesting. Like for instance, for example, a pastor is maybe dating or is interfering with someone from the congregation. So they would put the lyrics Everything would rhyme nicely, and people will know that the, that affair was happening secretly, but they would express it musically, and that would just create a vibe in the area. So it's like storytelling, but reality. I mean, there's so many other examples, you know, I mean, the macho men who have more than one women, or those women with more than one men, you know, these, these type of stories would just come out, you know? And everybody would just gather, people would laugh, and people would move to the music, the sound of the drums and the shakers and the heating of the bamboo. Everything would just, you know, gel to create that musical and dancing experience, you know? So growing up around that, 
I realized that is something that works for us. But then my dad always used to play like the Jamaican music, you know, the Trini Calypso, the Trini Soca, the Bajan Soca, the Grenadian Soca. Sometimes there's some American hip hop and rap, you know, and a lot of African zook, which is kind of like the, the groovy soca, power soca kind of vibe, you know. So grew up hearing on this, all this music and, you know, these were the music that were really hitting the dance hall. You go to a party, that's what you would really hear. But there was a time when the dance hall from Jamaica was really knocking and the soca from Trinidad was really knocking. And I'm seeing every time we go out to, uh, to an event, this is all we do, you know? We move to the sounds of the Trinis and we move to the sounds of the Jamaicans. And to me, it was just, in every dance hall, 90% of the music that we would enjoy would be either some Trini music or some Jamaican music. So I sat down and I said to myself, you know, this, this needs to change, man. We create events in Lucha, you know? We could create our own vibe. So I started collecting, you know, my, my samples, you know, the corn shell, the drums. And I, I started experimenting until I got something that sounded close to the Jamaican dancehall, right? And I'm say, I said to myself, the lyrics will be a mixture of quail and English. And that's basically what it's supposed to be with then what they refer to as the Denry segment. And I'm going to get to the name in a while. So I did one with the Jamaican kind of dancehall feel, and then one with the African kind of zoop slash the Trini soca with the Grenadian soca, also the Bajan soca, because this is what we listen to. So I had to calculate the beats per minute, the BPM, and try to fit something in between all those, you know, BPMs. But it would have to be the active, instru the, the active instruments, the drums, the shakers, the knocking of the bamboo, the corn shell, and the lyrics in Creole and English. And that was just, well, through experimenting, when we, when we release maybe our first five songs, I mean, I just couldn't understand that it really worked because island-wide, I mean, when people start hearing that it was kind of like new, people were used to just like the Trini vibe or, or the Jamaican vibe and they heard, well, you know, something is sounding almost Jamaican, but they're hearing the quail, you know, and you know, what better way for St. Lucian to express his or herself other than Quayol? I mean, we would say certain things in English, but in Quayol, it sounds sweeter. I mean, it, there's just that other vibe when you're expressing yourself in Quayol. So boom, the thing just blew out of proportion, which I had no idea it would. But I knew I put extra work into it, especially with the instruments and the tuning of the, the, the sounds to make sure that there's that kick and there's that bass line and you know, and everything was sounding good. So after that, I said to myself, well, we need a name for it, you know? And I didn't want to be selfish about the name where, because it's not a Denry thing, it's a St. Lucian thing. So I wanted us to ask St. Lucians because I mean, and I have to give kudos to the pioneers, the elders who were in the music, I mean, long before me, who were doing their vibe, but, in my humble opinion, it was more like following the, 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 the Jamaican style, the Trini style, the Grenadian style of music, you know? But this is what we had and this is what we had to listen to. But I said to myself, nah, man, we're changing the vibe around. Well, I'm changing the vibe around. It has to be something with our culture and who we are. We're going to, I'm, I'm going to have solutions to express themselves in Creole. And by the way, Quayol is a language that we speak here, but lots of people in St. Lucia, I guess, Cook, maybe you probably were scolded for speaking Quayol. <laughs> because 
Cook is way older than me, and I mean, I can I can safely say that I don't think Cook is too good with the Creole. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I mean, there was this stigma attached to the Creole that, you know, when you speak the Creole, you know, I'm not going into every bit of detail, but, you know, it, 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 was, it was something that most solutions to me, in my humble opinion, just wouldn't accept that. You speak in Creole, you know, you declasse or you're just, yeah, you're supposed to be speaking English, you know? I said, no, man. As a matter of fact, Quail made me who I am today, you know? Yeah, so I'm very proud of, of speaking and expressing myself in Quail. And every St. Lucian will tell you the best way to express yourself in any situation is in Quail. Whether there is excitement, there's cricket, there's boxing, we all know in terms of expression, Quail. There are certain words we refer to as our national word. Expressing yourself in Quail, he, he, Quail. And that's just, I mean, Father Nature knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cook knows what I'm talking about, you know? So, Quayol, to me, is everything in terms of who I am today. So, again, now going, going to the original name, I said to myself, man, you know? Okay, let me, let me see. All right, let me express how the Denry segment came about. So, we had a couple of DJs. And I choose not to really mention names, you know. I'll just say it you know, as it is, Cook, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, I, I don't really want to mention this. But certain DJs would contact me for, for the music, you know, because they really like the vibe. And they would say, man, why you have that's new? And two of those DJs said to me, man, because I create a whole folder and I named that Denry segment. Because I know you from Denry, and I know it's Denry on Mondays, just, you know, burst all them tunes. And that's how the name, the whole Denry segment name starts, you know. It's just two DJs, you know, that were calling me every time we release a song. And they start just, they, they, they name their folder, because that time everybody's using computer to DJ. And they name it Denry segment. And it so happened that both of these DJs were working on popular radio stations in St. Lucia. They were announcers as well. So they kept on just, you know, pushing the vibe and say, boy, then we segment, then we segment. And in all fairness, I said I wouldn't mention this, but I, I'll mention the names. You know, it was still Lancelot. He works right now, I think, with Hot FM, but at the time, I think he used to work with Blazing FM and Scotty.p. These were the two guys who would always call and ask us, what you have there, what Denry segment, new vibe you have there. And at that time, Scotty used to run a club, I think, upper level, somewhere up north. And he would always invite us, you know, to, you know, run our vibe there. But it's those two DJs, I would say, who really started calling the vibe Denry segment. All because, you know, they contacted me and they know I'm from Denry. But I said from that time, I said, no, I don't want it to be, you know, a Denry thing. Because I realized after about a year, other artists from other communities were, were doing the, the same vibe. So let us do that thing. Let us make it a solution thing. So I said the best thing to do, seven times British, seven times French. We speak the Quayol and we speak the English. Quayol, English in Quayol is ugly. So I took the prefix from the word Quayol and the suffix from the word Ugly. So I took the que from the quail and the gle from the ugly. And music in quail is called music. So I said the best name for that genre is music quegle. And that quegle is spelled K W E with the axa guav. That's in French. G L E with the same accent on it. And it's music quegle. You know? I'm feeling that boy. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Wow. wow. You know? Yeah. Again, because the lyrical content, the storytelling, you know, because those songs, there's storytelling. There's also reality. You could tell a story, you could speak reality in Quayol. So I said, well, you know, let's just call that music quigley. So what really makes it music quigley is the ability 
to sing maybe the chorus in Creole and you have your verses in English or you sing your verse in Creole or you could have it like a mix up where you have both the Creole and a few lines in English, whether it's in the, in the, in the verse or the chorus, but you just have to mix the two. And not just mix in any old fashion. You know, we need the rhyme, we, we the, the rhymes must be there. You understand? So we had songs like Kimun Kin Lode Kabitla. And again, that's in Quayol. And for our listeners, those of you who don't speak Quayol, I mean, if there's Haitians listening, Dominicans, uh, Martinique, Guadeloupe, these people will, people from France may understand some of what we're saying. But again, the, the lyrical content is Quayol and English. You know? So telling the story, in Creole, telling the story in English, just construct that vibe, blend it up nicely, together with the sounds of the drums and the shakers and the heating of the bamboo and the corn shell. Yeah, man, express yourself verbally, musically. And that's just basically what the music quickly is all about, you know? I mean, it has blown to Denry segment. I mean, I'm respecting the vibe and I want to pick up every single artist, you know, who heard that particular sound, that particular way of expressing ourselves musically and who took it on, whether some of them are, 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 are vulgar or whatever way, but the idea, you know, that was created and then to see the young artists, whether it's male or female, embracing it and doing the vibe, you know, it, it brought some real joy to me. But I must say, there are certain artists who know where the vibe started, you know, and they behave like they don't know. And to me, yeah, man, just, just respect the vibe, man, you know. Yeah, give Jack his jacket. I mean, yes, y'all got into something and you guys are very successful. Big up to you guys for that. But at the same time, you know, know your history because Cook didn't know anything about me. Cook went to all of the artists. So many of them. And all of them pointed Cook to me. Why is that Cook? <laughs> There's nothing like the root. And, and, and on that note, I want to just thank you for sharing all of those insights. Yeah. Um, really, really insightful to have an appreciation of, of the origin and also listening to your story of sharing and caring. And that was the reason why I, I felt that this would be a different kind of session. One where really now you, the folks of the younger generation, you, the folks who are going to have no choice but to have the solutions. I am very encouraged because I am seeing the solutions in the caring, in the sharing. And I think that it is so important for us to celebrate and promote those things. Yeah. So let me just say, my brothers, thank you so much for that sharing. I am sure that there will be a flurry of, of questions, comments, etc., coming in. I'm going to encourage that. Um, but what I would like to do now is just move on and invite Father Nature yeah. to come on. And the same thing, just share your story. You know, how did you end up doing what you were doing? In fact, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. I shared with folks and I invited them to go check out your, your Instagram. I wondered for a moment if you were going to bring any of your pets on with you. But I was also worried that they might have scared folks, you know, because they might be worried that that tarantilla might have jumped through the screen. Wow. So, my brother, Jean-Louis, Father Nature, all yours, my brother. Yeah, man. Again, again, thank you so much for having me. I always appreciate, even if just a little bit of exposure, especially from my beginnings coming up. Um, I actually just came from a, an adventure now and I was just rushing through the road to get here. I was like, I need to be at this webinar. I don't care what happens. I have to be here because I like just um, 
talking about this, my my story, how I've been here, and listening to Javima, I'm like, wow, man, I, I'm I'm loving this. Yeah, especially when he said, um, like how he expressed himself with the English and the Creole, uh, how St. Lucians again express themselves. I express myself differently, and it's with adventure and showing off my island. Yeah, that's my particular way. I mean, if it's my style, it's my style. Um, but it all started when I can go as far as when I was a, a young boy. I was never this adventurous, never this brave. I was actually a coward and a houseboy because I came from a single parent household. And since one of my parents wasn't around, I was more locked inside because, you know, the parent would go out to work and he's kind of scared that your children is outside on the road, a vehicle bongs them, or they buy the river, they drown, and there's nowhere to be found. You know how it is. So I was more inside for the most parts of my life, which is somewhat of a good thing right now because I feel like my childhood was somewhat bottled inside and just really wanted to come out, like trying to burst through. But again, just all bottled inside because I was inside for most of my life. And uh, when I finally got the freedom and I became a man, went to school, finished school, I actually did not know what I wanted to be in life. Like, did I want to be a pilot? Do I want to, like, when people were given their, like, their, their views on, on life or the future, they want to be a doctor, they want to be a lawyer. I'm just like, I'm not sure yet, man. I, like, I don't want to be that guy, but I honestly don't know. So, Obviously, I'm trying to find myself. I did a course at NSDC. I did obviously administration because I like to see people looking fly their shit on their time. I'm like, okay, I'll try that out. I got a job in an office and I hated it. Hate. Like just being in AC in front of a computer, like that was sending me cuckoo. Okay, I didn't last there very long. Went on to something else in a warehouse. I mean, I'm a little more hands-on. I still wasn't feeling that job. That wasn't me. I'm trying to find that niche that fits my lifestyle, what I like. And then I finally sent an application at um, Rainforest Adventures, which is a zipline and tram, basically an adventure business company, I would say. And, you know, I felt a little comfortable there. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm liking the vibes. Um, I'm outside, I'm talking to guests, I'm ziplining, it's kind of it's fun, it's comfortable, it's not as stressful. And um, while I was there, I started investing the money and say, I want I need to get in something that pays a little more, because you know. So I did a course at of the morn in air conditioning, age rack, like fixing ACs and fridge and what have you. And I passed everything. Is is bees. I, I, dis I destroyed that course, but still, like, I wasn't, it wasn't me, you know, I liked, I loved working at Rainforest Adventures, but I'm like, if I'm working for someone at this job, I'm comfortable, I will not grow, you know, until this one lady at a guest told me that they did the uh, was it the sea trek where you put the mask on and then you walk in underneath the water? I don't know if you guys know what that is. Yes. So she told me about that. And I was like, I was so flabbergasted. I was like, what? St. Lucia has something like that? So I was just so ashamed because she was my client at the time. And I had no idea what she was talking about. I didn't know St. Lucia had something like that. And I was ashamed that someone came to St. Lucia, paid thousands of dollars, and they know my country more than me. I couldn't, that was not sitting right with me. So I'm like, okay, apparently I don't know my country. I don't know what we have to offer. So I need to step up on that. I, and within around that time, there's a situation in my, I can't really say about it right now, but something happened in my life where it kind of pushed me to go out and just explore. And I'm not really a drinker and I'm not a smoker as well. So that was the only escape I had for myself to just go out and get lost, get just do a couple adventures. And 
I think I climbed Gopito and Pitipito at least 10 to 15 times within that period. So I, I did so much. I just, people were starting to call me the mountain goats. I'm up and down mountains. I got that. And I, I, need, I need a bit more. I started looking for waterfalls. I started looking for scenic places in St. Lucia. Mind you, I got lost so many times, but just the thrill of it. And again, remember I told you guys that when I was younger, all that childhood stuff was bottled up inside and there's no place to kind of just... Oof. So I started letting off steam because I'm a, I'm a big boy now and I'm outside just playing, going to the rivers, going to the mountains, doing, doing that stuff. And I started taking pictures and I always like take my little pictures and put it on the gram, you know, on Facebook, on Instagram, on... I mean, WhatsApp didn't have the status yet. Um, yeah. And every time I'm taking my photos, people are freaking out like, wow, where is that? St. Lucia. Where is that? Where is that? I want to go there. Where, where? It's not St. Lucia. You're crazy. I'm like, this is St. Lucia. Like, this, this is our island, man. This is 758, I promise you. And this one person told me, yo, I would pay you to take me there. And then I was like, wow, okay. I was doing that stuff for free. Like I, I have no problem just bringing you to a waterfall or bringing you on an adventure, bringing you to see some sites. That's not a problem. I, I wasn't looking at it as anything I could make money out of it, you know, cause I'm having fun doing this. And when the person said they would pay me, you know, like on the cartoons with the big, the big uh, bubbles, bing, <laughs> I was like, yes, okay. All right, let's time to make some moves. But I wasn't father nature yet. I wasn't, I was just, well, I, my nickname used to be just call me Megs. Because, you know, when you Meg, I, you know, everybody's seen me. I Meg, you know? <laughs> so that was my nickname. And I was talking to someone and I don't know, she they wasn't really feeling my Instagram name Megs and the way that my Instagram looks. So I just said, okay, fine. Well, give me a nickname then. And magically, the person just looked at my Instagram one more time and they said, I don't know, Father Nature. And I was like, wow. That has a nice ring to it, you know, like the nature part of me, Mother Nature, now I'm Father Nature. I looked at all the different angles of it and I just had a nice ring to it. So I changed my Instagram name. And obviously, like, since my name is Father Nature, I had to kind of push more of that kind of content like i wasn't pushing as more my personal life but just more nature vibes showing off my country um, um jumping in there showing different animals and within that time i adopted a tarantula which i was extremely scared of like some people will go on my profile and like oh my goodness like this guy's crazy why he's not afraid but i was terrified so but I noticed like online, it was a thing in the international countries to have um, pet spiders, scorpions, iguanas, all these crazy animals that we don't really um, partake in in St. Lucia. We know just cats, dogs, probably a little parakeet or something in St. Lucia. So since I work at the forest, I got myself a tarantula and I had it there inside, but in a, in a, in a cage. And that was locked. That was sealed to the rim and i was nursing that tarantula for almost a year like just studying how it eats um how it reacts to when if i push man in the cage or if i put a pen um how does it web how fast can it go so just a full-on year just studying that animal and then i brought it outside every now and then bring it outside its cage, see if you could touch, make just one of its arms touch my finger and see how it will react. And then just easy does it until I could have actually took a picture of it on my hand. And boom, people started going crazy. But I wasn't really posting the, the behind the scenes. So months, nobody knew I had a tarantula. That was just my personal project. It wasn't anyone's business. But when I posted it, people just seen a madman. Like, this guy's crazy. This guy, why does this guy have a, a, a matutu? Because that's what they call it in St. Lucia. Matutu on his hand. And I got brave and I got two. And I had one on my, my head. I had one on my hand. And people were just like, wow. 
wow, this guy is crazy. This guy has um, tranches all over his body and what have you. And immediately, it didn't take long. Um, Nigel at NBC, he reached out to me. And he was like, yo, you need to come on the show tomorrow morning at 10. And I was like, I don't care what I have to do at the time. I am making that show. Because that's when I started going more into my business. Yeah, so I was like, I'm taking that opportunity on radio? Radio show? Me? Of course. Of course, of course. So I went to the show. I brought my little tarantula. Um, thank God the tarantula I had. Like, I played with it so much. It was almost socialized. So I could have, like, the people on the show hold the, the spider and take pictures as well. Came on the show, spoke about the spider. Because that's what, that's what they, had, they had me on. Speaking about the spider and different animals. And then obviously, if I'm speaking about a spider, I can't hide the business. I can't have the business sleep. So I spoke about my business and they liked the vibe. It was going well. It was getting good reviews. I was like, okay, good vibes. I'm starting to get a little bit set of parts. But let's go. Went back, started um, getting some good referrals because, oh, I saw you on the show. How much is your tour? Um, can you take me there? Because everybody got the information on the on the radio show. So I was I was thankful for that. And uh going forward, I mean, I just started getting comfortable and I was never really a business person. So you're just more consistency, just learning, okay, that went wrong. I'll do that. This is that I'll do that. Uh, how much would I put uh, how much work I put in, how much I should charge people, and you know, just learning. It was a fun process going. When I'm going, learning, and it was just authentically fun. And just, I don't know, like, just seeing, especially the locals, just seeing people booking tours and making me the one to show them their island. And when I bring them a certain place, you're just like, wow, that's my island. Like, I don't even have to travel far and wide to enjoy myself i can literally stay home and enjoy this place and it just it just made me i don't know like i don't even know no words to put you know it made me a little mushy inside like yes i want to keep doing this and i started getting more of, a, more of an international client base which was good but i still always rather work with the locals because the way their mouth drop it's it's breathtaking because the international people, they know that's a new They look at the little brochures like, okay, it's a nice country. Let's go. But the locals who have been here their entire life and they don't know. And I'm the one honored to show them this is your country. Till this day, I have people messaging me. They do not believe this part is St. Lucia. That is St. Lucia. That is St. Lucia. And I'm like, yes, yes, my boy, this, this is St. Lucia. And um, if the entire father nature thing going on, with the animals from the spider, um, I got, I decided to take it a step further and get myself a, a snake. Um, by the way, guys, you can't just go into the wild and get a snake and bring it at your home. That is illegal. I had to go to forestry, got my papers, got registered. Um, he came to my house, interviewed me. And when I showed him my enclosure for the spiders, I think that's when I won them over to get the snake. I was like, wow. This guy has a full-on setup for a spider. Now nah, that guy is going to... He's good, he's good, he's good. Okay, fine. You just, just sign here. It's yours. And I got the snake. I try I'm all... To this time, I'm still trying to tame it. It's somewhat tamed because I can hold it. I put it on my neck. I can have it on my bed right now and I won't feel threatened. But at a cost. I got bit on my head. I got bit on my hand. And it's just a fun process. I wouldn't really recommend people doing that, but it's my lane. That's something I do. I find it interesting. And it's what kind of brings people to my page as well. Like, wow, this guy is so cool. Like, look at the, the animals and just teaching people. So how does he eat? I post little photos and videos on my WhatsApp story. Oh, look at how it turns around the or on the, the mouse or a rat and just swallowing it whole, um, showing the little clips of when it's shedding its skin. And the ch and I guess I notice when I'm walking in town, a lot of children know my name. 
So I, I'm thinking maybe the parents, when I'm posting statuses, they're showing their kids, come look at this. And since I have the, I, um, I'm saying Lucian, and my commentary, my commentary is Lucian, I speak, like I said, Lucian, I have my little patel in there, my little Creole in there. It's relatable. So they can show their kids, oh, look at that, and look at that. And they feel like, okay, well, that's at home. Instead of when you look at it on the TV and you hear that these American accents, you feel more comfortable watching the little content I post on, just on my WhatsApp stories for now. And um, yeah, so far my journey is still going on. I haven't made it yet. I'm still far from where I want to be, but I'm just happy to be where I am right now and going with it. With the different adventures and uh, oh my goodness there's so much i just don't want to rant for too much <laughs> but yeah, I, really... I mean it's it's all good for the nature um and i just want to say if i can just jump in here um just to say to 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 my audience um i'm sure you can appreciate why it is that i said that today would be a session with a difference and one where I really wanted to invite these gentlemen in just to share and tell their stories. And I come back to our central theme of what is it, what does it mean to be Lucian? What is uniquely ours? And how do we identify that and use that as a catalyst to help us to be the best that we can be. And from both of these gentlemen, you've heard it in different ways. That, that love of country, also that communal spirit, um, Japima with the story of his music, the story of telling stories, our local way, um, with Father Nature of him having more delight out of taking fellow St. Lucians out to experience a part of our country that they had no idea exists. And they, maybe even when they get to the location, still have to pinch themselves to ask themselves if this is real. And we have many problems in this country, but one of the big ones that we have, and one of the things that I hope expressions such as are happening here bring to light is the importance and the need for support. Why is it that gentlemen such as these are not well known, are not celebrated. We look abroad. How many times have we brought people into the country to speak to, for instance, the situation with the youth, with crime, etc.? And I always say that the talk about the youth and the youth being wayward is a cheap cop out that none of us should accept because no youth man, no youth child, no youth girl asked to come into this world. We brought them here and their failure, if we call it a failure, is our responsibility. It's as a consequence of our failings for whatever that reason is. So it is so unfair to then turn around and speak to the youth. You know, they wayward, they don't want to learn, they this, they that, they whatever. No, how have we failed them? And I think that these two gentlemen really, really epitomize the excellence that exists. And what I ask is, how can we find ways to lift them up? How can we find ways to celebrate them? We must identify self and celebrate our heroes. And I just want to say to both of you, you know, Japima and Father Nature, you gentlemen, to me, are absolute St. Lucian heroes. I'm gonna turn now because I see a couple of comments coming in and I'm going to go through them. And I was very delighted when I saw June on, June Frederick, who was uh, a panelist from the last session. And June spoke about culture. Interestingly, Japima, 
June spoke to masquerade at Christmas and the masquerade is dear at heart to her. And I smiled when I went into the comments and I'm gonna pull, pull them up and just read through. And I invite folks to come along with other comments as well. Um, when June was the first person to, to jump on with a comment and absolutely no surprise at that. So folks, I hope that so far you've really, really enjoyed this session, been enjoying it. And let me just take some of the comments. And as the comments come in, I'm going to invite you gents, you know, to comment on it, I'll invite you in, etc. cetera. Um, and, and we'll just continue the vibes in from there. So June started the ball rolling um, and her comment was, uh, let me just go back to the top of this. Um, this first one that came in from her. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, music Quigley, a Denry segment. Lovely to meet the creator. So, so Jaim, Japima, that's big up to you. Um, from another beautiful elder among us. June, if I am at the liberty to say so, but we wear that as a badge of honor. So this is June sending that out to you. She has also asked, do you wish the genre to change to the name that you have suggested, the name that you actually have given it? So what are your thoughts on that, on that, Jaim? Well, yeah, like I yeah, said, yeah. I mean, when it all came to me, from the inception, I did not start with any name, but as it keep on evolving, I'm realizing what it is, especially when they started calling it Denry segment, you know? I said to myself, I'm not going to be selfish about that at all. You know, and that's just the thing I want everybody to understand. I'm not going to be selfish about it, but because we created it in um not because it was created in my area, because St. Lucia is 248 square miles. We have 17 constituencies. And in each constituency, there is someone who's interested in expressing themselves musically in Coyola. Again, I will say, due to the fact that the lyrical content, English and Coyola, I had to name it something close to that. It's music, it's Coyola, predominantly the, the, the lyrical content is mostly Coyola. Again, the prefix from the word quail and the suffix from the word ugly, I took the two and I blend it up nicely. Music quigly, right? And I would rather and I'd prefer that it's referred to as music quigly and not the Henry segment. Thanks for that, Jaim. Um, so there we have it, straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Uh, the music, the name of the music is Music Quigley. Yeah. And again, what a beautiful, beautiful play on, on, on phonics, I can call it, because it also has a beautiful ring to it. But then that comes as no surprise, you know, Japima, when you speak to um, what you grew up in, your, your grandfather involved in solo, the yeah. double entendre, Right, the puns, the 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 the, the, in the secrets. Um, and if I, if open, I may, but if in I may a just, very colorful way. Yes, all yours. If I may just add to it, right? Yeah. The name of my studio is Studio Nine One One, right? Now, to be everything, I think a lot, and I and I put value to name. I got into lots of problems for that name, even with the fire department here, right? But I mean, that's my name. It's, it's a registered business name and they did not want me to use it at one time. So I said to them, well, I mean, if you guys don't want me to use it, I, I, I can understand that, but you will have to talk to my lawyer. And also if I have to change the name, you will have to pay because that is going to affect my brand. So the fire chief, <laughs> the man had a problem with me, you know. I mean, they want me to change the name. I cannot use studio. And I don't know. They said that's for fire for emergencies. That's a number. Four. I said, well, I said, but if you have a problem with the name studio nine one one, then you should have a problem with my date of birth. 
I was born on September, September 11th, right? September is the ninth month on the 11th day. So that is why I named my studio, Studio 911. And everything I do in terms of my productions, you would just see 911. So I said to him, well, if, well then you should, you should change my, my date of birth as well, too. If I can use the name Studio 911, then you should, you should go to the register and ask them to change my date of birth. And it was at that point I realized, you know, I wasn't getting any calls from them anymore. You know, so I always think hard before I formulate or even name something. I don't just name for naming sake, you know? That is why I thought of the lyrical content of the song and, you know, the music and the, like I said, the, the drums and the African kind of style that, you know, we all share in the Caribbean. Maybe the best name for that is, is, is music quickly. <laughs> so thanks for that, my brother. And you know, it's interesting, right? Because yet again, you have done another sleigh of hands with words on us. Because when I heard um, Studio 911, what came to mind was there's some sort of emergency. It's a musical emergency. Right. But interestingly enough, no, you brought it at yet a different position. You yeah. know, it's your date of birth. It is intrinsically you. Yeah. And, and I come back again and just want to commend you and bring it to light. We have so much amazing excellence among us. We really, really have to get to the point of celebrating and uplifting because when a garden get water, gets water, it flourishes beautifully and produces beautiful fruit. We must not let our fruit suffer, wither and die. Now, Kirk, again, just to add on what you're saying, I'm just this cool and easy as the wind blow guy. Soft and easy, you know, I don't fight anything. And some of the problems that, you know, came about during my experiment with the music, I would say is because certain individuals would approach and they would ask us or me, through me, to render our services to their vibe. So they have an event. They want one, two artists to support them. And I would just, you know, wholeheartedly give them the strength and allow the artists, you know, because it, it, it's, it's a win-win situation. We have new music. You have an event. You're a promoter. So we're new on the market. Let's just work together, you know, and we're building a vibe. But some of these people, what they did, and they are the ones who are responsible for you know, just disorganizing the whole movement. You know, start instilling certain talks in the brains of individuals that were involved in the movement. And that just create a whole diversion. That just messed up the whole vibe, you know? And I kept on saying to them, it's not like I don't understand the business of music, but someone who has a talent, who has yes. no money at all, why would I think that person should pay? You know, although with the business aspect of it, contractual agreement should be the order of the day. But then again, I mean, our culture is not one that's advanced musically like other Caribbean countries. And I, I, I just had to understand that's what it was. So, my vibe was, let us just build, let's just do what we have to do to develop and shape the arts in terms of the music quickly. And, you know, we'll take it from there. But other people had other intentions. I mean, some of them out there who was taking full credit for the name Denry segment, I didn't know. I mean, there's not much that they can see. And there's not much questions they can answer with regards to the initial or from the inception. There's not much that they can say about that. So they could see other things. But how it started, they can't, they can't describe it. Good you know? vibes there. And what it does is it really brings to mind, and this now becomes a whole nother level of conversation. Yeah. The importance of, of us recognizing 
the value of intellectual property and respect yes. for intellectual property. And I say that as well, wearing my hat as an artist, um, you know, it is something that we, we are plagued with and it really holds us back rather than taking us forward. Okay, let me just pull up some, some other comments that are coming up. Um, yeah, yeah. How do we book tours? This is now Father Nature. Boom, hot on the heels of that. Can we get Father Nature's WhatsApp number so that we can follow his status updates? So Father yes. Nature, I'm going to invite you to just speak to that. But let me also say in a recent email I sent out, I shared with folks Father Nature's WhatsApp. And if you just yeah. go on, on the Father Nature on, on the gram, you will find him. Um, and what I guess you can do as well is just go ahead and in the chat, you can post your, your WhatsApp information so that folks can reach out to you. And I am just super excited about the contact that is coming in as a consequence of, of having you on, because this is how we share the love and we spread the love and we build each other up. So Father Nature, just talk a little bit about, about your tours and how, how folks might get in touch with you. Okay, I think we should just, I should just put my number in the chat. So if anyone wants to see it, they can just take it. But and um, just ahead, and just go ahead and, and, and say it out loud as well, so that folks who are not privy to the chat at a future date will also have the information. Okay, well, my number to call or WhatsApp, it's 729 five six one three again seven two nine five six one three you could call me direct or you could just whatsapp me if you want to be on seeing the stories and the statuses or what have you um when it comes to booking tours most some people have called me and asked me where is the where is the father nature adventures office i'm just like office <laughs> office <laughs> Um, honestly, I'm usually flattered, like, wow, you really think, I mean, okay, looks really good online. So I guess that's why you think we have a actual office where you, where is the secretary or if I'm an adventure, um, and the service is bad, I, I'll let them know. I can call them maybe in the evening when I'm heading back because I'm on an adventure and like, okay, can I talk to your secretary? And I'm like, woo, wee, <laughs> yes, I'm loving this. But for now, again, I'm still growing. But most people book tours through um, either Instagram. That's why I get most of my messages. Uh, or on Facebook. But, and I also have a booking link on both of my Facebook and Instagram where you could just click on the link. You'd see the different tours like waterfall chasing, snorkeling, the Pebble Beach Adventure, um, Peter Climbs. I just kind of have it like, like major peaks minor peaks, snorkeling, waterfall chasing. And when you pick whatever you pick and you put the necessary information, like I'm a group of five, uh, I came from my honeymoon, I'm at Stonefield, um, I don't know how to swim, da, da, da. And then I contact you and we go back and forth. So in that way, you get more of a customizable adventure. So no adventure is the same. Um, so if, for example, if you get a group, nobody can swim, then okay, we discuss that and I bring five life jackets if you want if you want an adventure where you want to taste the local food but you're on this side of the island like okay well you two they don't have much place to eat on that side of the island i'll probably get it you know so we, we can go go back and forth so that every adventure i go on you feel like it's yours it doesn't feel like i repeat like okay we go there next up we go there we go there and see you nah we talk online we have a personal back and forth and then when we get on the dates, like if you say it's Friday, the 15th, if you want to go out, then I come to become, we meet up dates, drop you off and yeah. And I make sure on the adventures, I take lots and lots of pictures and videos. And I think every time I go on a different adventure, I kind of have the eye to make the people look like supermodels. So people really appreciate that. So when I give them the link of all the footages, they're just like, wow. Just wow. You know? And yeah, sometimes it's so intense that I can't even enjoy. Like I want to jump in the water. And but I'm just so taking photos and videos for the clients because 
I'm on that duty. And when I'm ready to have fun, they're like, okay, well, we all adventured out. And I'm like, ah, oh, right. I wanted to get in the water too, you know, like guys, guys, you're killing me. Eh? Yeah. But again, I don't want to rant. You guys can find me on Instagram at Father Nature Adventures 758 or on Facebook at Father Nature Adventures, TikTok, Father Nature Adventures. And again, my WhatsApp number is 729-5613 to get updated. Let's go. Okay, good vibes for that. Thanks, Father Nature. Um, here's another one coming in. Admiration and respect for Japima. I trust you are ensuring your royalties are duly generated and paid to you. Coming back to that whole matter of intellectual property. Um, any thoughts, Father Nature? Sorry, Japima? If um, um, I trust your ensuring your royalties are duly generated and paid to you. All right. Well, I must um, I must openly admit that Cook was actually the one who this man drove to my home, you know, and we had a chat about the whole vibe, you know. Interestingly, the same week that Kirk came to me, you know, I mean, we shared, we had a, we had a reasoning. Because they say, when you reason, that's it. 90% of reasoning is listening. So I didn't have a choice but to just listen to Kirk, you know. And sometimes we need to do that, you know, when, you know, especially an elder with experience, you know, reaches out and, you know, explains a certain things. And he said a few things to me, you know. And the first thing I did was the first advice that he gave me, which was to, you know, trademark the name, you know, register the name, you know. And I did that right away, Cook. So I have my everything is organized now, you know. Yeah. Nice. So that is done, and I'm taking it from there, you know. So everything that I'm going to produce now is gonna be done under that name right now, you know. It's registered. I mean, I paid everything now, so I know it's everything is up and running for this time around. Like you said, things just have to be done the right way. Yeah. You know, and if we don't do things the right way, it's like anything that you want to do, you do your research and you find out how should it be done. Yeah. You know, it's just like going to court. And according to our criminal code in St. Lucia, Section 25 says, ignorance is no excuse in the courthouse. So you cannot go to court and say you did not know. So the fact that I started that vibe a certain way and I did not put certain things in place, that loophole was just there for anyone to just capitalize on it, you know? So I have understood that's what it was and there's nothing much I can do about it. But the good thing is, music quickly was always something that I didn't talk much about, you know? And it is right now, so it's registered. And that's just the bottom line, you know? So, man, thank you so very much for your words of encouragement, I, I, I must say. And you did express to me that, you know, you always ask the question, what can we do moving forward, you know? And the fact that you have two of us, myself and Father Nature here, I have said to myself, and I have made it clear to my, you know, level of understanding that, him and myself should even, even work close to. The fact that you selected both of us and you have us on that same platform, the two of us should work together hand in hand. And people, by the way, I must let you all know that Cook is a photographer. Father Nature is into his, um, you know, tours and stuff. Sheesh. And it so happened, you know, I do, I do both of what they do too. I'm into photography as well. <laughs> and I do my nature vibe too, you know? So... It's like I'm the man in the middle. <laughs> so it's all it's all very beautiful. And again, yeah. again, I think that the important observation and takeaway is that selflessness is so much more powerful than selfishness. Yeah. Um, we see in the Bible this story of it's better to give than to receive. And but human nature is selfish. We always want for ourselves. But it, it is so beautiful giving. And I have found that in giving, giving a purity of heart, that so much more comes back. 
And it comes back sometimes in unexpected ways. In talking to you about protecting your intellectual property, about telling you thoughts on it, etc., it also made me think about things related to my business and intellectual property as well. And, and that for me is a beautiful thing. Like it just allows us to all grow. And if I take, you know, we often talk about crabs in a barrel, the crabs in a barrel mentality. But the truth is, I would like for us to dispel that thought, that notion, that idea from our consciousness. And for us to move instead to the idea that a rising tide will float all boats in the harbor. And when the tide is rising, it is so unstoppable that if your boat gets caught underneath the dock, it will mash up, it will burst. So if we take this approach that together we can all uplift ourselves, we will all be so much the better for that approach. So let me just pick up a couple more thoughts because like I said, the 90 minutes runs like crazy and we've just got about nine minutes left. So um, love the name of the genre, keep that name. Trademark it and patent it. So more coming back there at you, Japima. So yes, all sir. great vibes there. Love that new boy. Yeah. yeah. Here is another one. The good thing, um, and this now is for you, Father Nature. The good thing is that you are teaching lots of what so many have never been and may never be taught. Um, again, at Father Nature. Father Nature, I admire how you have found your purpose. Have you ever thought of building a zoo with exotic animals from St. Lucia and maybe neighboring islands? That's certainly pushing you hard. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Here's another one. Respect to you, Father Nature. Are you going to bigger animals in the future? So interesting, right? Two different people are coming back yeah. and asking things along the same lines. Here's the another animal. one. Um, let me let me just any any thoughts on that, Father Nature? Any comments you want to make? Well, it would be the first time people tell me, "Am I opening a zoo?" <laughs> yeah, um, but that comment on on opening a zoo regional Oof, that's that's a new one <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i mean and i was thinking of probably opening something small um probably just for the kids to appreciate like you know seeing the different creatures but not anything as massive where i'd have to be home and be taking clients all the time but just something i could be mobile enough i can go to different places and have my content going and just you know, just love, you know. I can think about it. I can sit and talk to my person and see what we can go back and forth. But for now, I'm, I'm definitely writing that down because that can go a long way. Nice. Okay, so good vibes for that. Thanks, Father Nature. Um, I just had something come in. Why is chat disabled? Sorry, that was my bad. And every now and again, I get stuck. I think I have enabled it now. So just check and see. Um, does does Jaim's registration include echo? That's one for you, Japima. Well, again, like we said, after Cook and I had the chat, I decided to register. So it's just a week since I did this, you know? So I've not had the time to go to echo just to, to make sure that everything, you know, is in order for, 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 for that, you know? Yeah. But Echo does have some stuff with me because uh, Studio 911 is regis registered and, you know, they know about it, but it's just the music quickly. I've not gone to them yet. Like I said, it's just a week. So in the coming weeks, I will definitely pay them a visit and uh, we'll take it from there. Lovely. Uh, here's another comment coming in. Very inspiring and much impressed. Hope our young people get to see and hear their stories. Here's another one. Is there support for artists in regards to getting them trademarked in St. Lucia? So that's a very interesting uh, question yeah. there. Yes. Well, to answer this, for me to say there isn't support, 
Yeah, I don't think that'd be fair. But I, I just find that a lot more could be done in terms of sensitizing the public and also reaching out. Like I would always use you as an example, Cook. The very same people, especially those in the policymakers, those in government, you know, when they when they need to look good, you know, they find they find the artists for entertainment purposes, you know. I mean, they, they themselves should take that interest to in finding the creators, you know, those those who took the time out to 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 shape the vibe because we have people from different people from Caribbean have reached out, Trinidad, Grenada, they come down to St. Lucia and they find me. Virgin Records, they came down and they found me. You understand? Cook at St. Lucia was doing his research, moving all around the place and he found me. The policymakers, I mean, we have a ministry of responsibility for the youth economy. We have, you know, those for the arts and the culture. They have to reach out and, you know, it's from them too. They have to big up the vibe too. They have to recognize us. They have, like you said, it's not just individuals that have to see the need to celebrate us. Those that we exercise, exercise our franchise to put them to leaders, they themselves have to play their role to support the movement too. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they don't because, I mean, I've seen lots of artists who came after and, you know, they're doing really good and they got the support from, from government and they're out there. And I'm happy for that because, you know, it, it's just nice because maybe last year or year before I saw lots of our artists in Dubai performing and, you know, that just felt so nice. But to see, wow, St. Lucians are out there doing the vibe. You know, one time it used to be, you just see it's Jamaicans, Americans, Trinis, but we have something, we just have to stick to it continue building it and we have to move forward with it because it's a really good vibe trust me good vibe yeah man um, here is another comment that came in japima your music is known in germany so take this opportunity to promote this genre yeah so i'm really delighted at all of the the words of encouragement um that 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 has that have come in this afternoon and like i said i i, I hope that folks have really really enjoyed this session. Um, just as we look to, to wind down, um, I, I want to share with folks from quite a while back, I've had um, folks reaching out to me and asking me about photography. You know, Kirk, how can we purchase some of your work? Um, and, and I've always just sort of pushed it to the background. Uh, one of the reasons was really because I wanted this to develop, these sessions to develop. This is now the ninth one that we're, we, we, we're into. Um, we're coming around almost to, to the end of the period because um, maybe January or February of next year, we'll really bring the end of it, um, of, of, of that first year of it. And I'm, I don't know whether or not I will continue with it. It's just going to depend on how things develop. But I didn't want offering product for sale from my end to be a distraction in the first instance. But now that we're this far into the game, I want to share with folks that I do have a series of pictures. I've actually had them for quite some time, and there's some folks who are familiar with them um, that I am going to be offering for sale, and I will share an email uh, with folks, you know, subsequently, maybe over the next week or so. Um, I spoke about NFTs some time ago, and it is something that I've been looking at. And one of the things that I want to do is this is going to be the first time that I'm offering this set of pictures. It's a picture set of six um, that I'm going to be offering it to the broader community. And I wanted to start that offering right here. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a series of small pictures. It's going to be six of them. And generally, I would sell them. They're all autographed. I would sell them at, at 20 US for each one and then do the pack of six uh, for 100 bucks. Um, I am going to be making that offer available to folks. But I also want to share that I'm going to be coming out with another line of pictures, which are going to be now larger prints. I mean, these can go up to about six or eight feet wide. Um, and they're going to be offered on canvas. I want to do something really, really special. It's going to be a limited time offer. And the thoughts I have in mind 
uh, for me to offer this first set um, at a hundred bucks, that's gonna be a hundred US, but I'm going to give, offer with it a credit to folks who purchase, you know, within that initial period. It's gonna be maybe over two weeks you have to purchase. And the offer is going to be that you spend a hundred bucks, but you're going to get a credit for $250 um, that you can put towards any one of the pictures that you want to purchase that will be 500 US and over. So if you purchase a picture that's 500 bucks, basically what would have happened is that you're now going to get a $250 credit on it. And again, I'm going to be doing that for a very limited period of time, but I wanted to share that with this group, first of all. So that's for all of the folks who have been saying to me, Cook, we want to support you. We want to spend some money with you. So let me just say thank you so much for that. And I'm also really, really appreciating all of the love that has been given this afternoon um, to both uh, Japima and to Father Nature. Um, I am so delighted that we've been able to celebrate some of our heroes. And hero is not relegated to age, but rather to intent and to content. And both of these gentlemen have not only amazing intent, but also amazing content behind them. So, um, Again, just really wanting to, to round off with that um, and we'll be continuing the vibes. So with that said, as we have got another, you know, sort of two, three minutes or so, let me just invite um, both Father Nature and then Japima um, to just, just share some thoughts on, on the experience of this afternoon and, and some parting words. So let me start off with you first, Father Nature. Um, since we started with Japima first when we came on. <laughs> well, first of all, like I said in the beginning, I'm always more than excited to share my story and talk about, uh, go back and forth with different people, with Father Nature Adventures and just the whole Father Nature vibes. Um, I would say thank you, Cook, for reaching out to me because I like meeting people along the way. So all of this is part of my story when I get big up there can say, well, you know, I was invited to this webinar. This is what um, helped push me because someone from the webinar noticed me and we started working together. Look, ja look Japima said, um, we're going to work together. That made me feel so good inside. Yeah, boy, you see, all these little opportunities is just, yeah. So honestly, I just feel like I'm part of a book right now, but the book is not done. So I'm just going with the flow. And I'm excited to be a part of this series more than ever, man. Appreciate it 10 times. Yes, I. Nice vibes. Topping yeah. off. Yeah, man. So just want to thank the elders, you know, that inspired me, who inspired me on this journey. You know, Cook, big respect, honor, manners, and respect to you for reaching out in the way that you did, I must say. On this webinar, there's like, well, 17, no, there's 17 of us right now. And let me say a big shout out to Carol, Celia, Desmond, Flora, John, June, Khadija, Mark, Mary, Nandi, Rooney, Tekla, Yulinda. Thank you guys for taking time off your busy schedule to listen to us, for commenting, for encouraging us. And I know you guys mean well. You guys will be hearing more from us. This would not be our first. It wouldn't be our last appearance where we've cooked. Father Nature, pick up yourself. And, you know, we just have to make sure that we, you know, we stick together and we work together for the common good, which is to express ourselves the best way that we can as solutions to the world. Because you always say, you know, you have to present something, you know. I mean, again, Cook being the elder, reaching out to us as, you know, ambassadors to this beautiful Helen. It's on us now to make sure that we keep what we do, you know, and keep on encouraging the younger ones, you know, because at the end of the day, 
I mean, there were people before us and made, it, made their souls rest in power. There's a time and place for everything. We can't be selfish about anything. We have to, the spirit of caring and sharing, you know, that is what Cook is expressing to us. And that is being engraved in my heart right now. And, you know, we should just continue that legacy. Whether people realize, whether people support or not, we should never allow these things to take over, you know, our true sense here on this earth, you know? So again, to those of you who showed your support by just being present on this webinar, and again, supporting your words of encouragement, your suggestions, thank you very much. And I'm gonna see to it that I'm gonna write every suggestion or question that was posed on this chat. And I'm gonna make the, ne the necessary adjustments. Yeah, man. Thank you. Look, blessings, now, one love. Yeah, man, one love every time. Mm -hmm. Um, Japima, please share your contact information. I have someone asking for it. Yes. Well, my number, area code 758, so 1758. 285-1311. If you make this a Quayol, because Quayol is a long way. Who say when you can't say that you can't open Quayol? Limo say yon set sec wit de wit sec yon twa yon yon. This is who we are, bilingual. Nice. I heard that. And just let me let as we wrap up, here are a couple of comments that are still coming in with a flurry. Kudos to Father Nature. I will be sharing his WhatsApp with folks who are very interested in touring St. Lucia. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate this is it. Come from the same person who spoke to the fact that um Japima's music is well known in Germany. So that's a beautiful international contact. Yeah. Good job, Japima. We'll be checking more of your music online. Here's another one. Jappy Ma, thanks for putting St. Lucia bigger on the world map. Big respect. I love it. Um, nice. Very inspiring and much impressed. Hope our young people get to see and hear their stories. Where there is unity, there is strength. True that. Yeah. So folks, on that note, um, here's bringing the curtains down on what has been a very, very delightful evening spent with these two pinnacles of excellence within our midst. Let us always remember, now is our time to celebrate, and we absolutely have the power. That said, folks, here is bidding you all a pleasant rest of your Sunday afternoon. And let's all move forward in peace and power going forward. Kirk out. Blessings, Ooh. man. Thanks for your Blessings. effort, Cook. Big up yes, one of the max. Respect. Wow. Yes. Yeah.